टूडे दी क्लास इज अबाउट इंटीरियर नेजल पैकिंग इंटीरियर नेजल पैकिंग इज मेनली डन फॉर विच कंडीशन Requirement of doing anti nasal packing? Epistaxis. So yes, in case of uh, epistaxis, where it is not controlled. So when a person or patient comes with epistaxis, the first thing we do is what is the first thing should be done? We have to pinch the nose. So we pinch the nose of the patient for how much time? Ten minutes. Any other answer? Five to six minutes. It is up to the bleeding time or the clotting time. We pinch the nose, and should the patient be lying down or sitting position? Sitting position. So patient should be in sitting position with his neck should be down and we should pinch the nose for five to six minutes, depending on the clot because that is the approximate or general clotting time and we give that time. But after this pinching also, if it, the bleeding does not stop, then we will go for anterior nasal packing. Can you tell me some causes for nasal bleed? So nose picking. Trauma is the most important cause. Any other cause? Hypertension. Adults. Yes, in adults, hypertension remains one of the most common cause. Any other cause that you are aware of? Polyps less likely. Malignancy. Yes. Any other cause? Nasal mass. Nasal mass, which is part of malignancy. Anything else? Coagulopathy. So, patient having a bleeding disorder. In that case, also there can be nasal bleed. So, these are common causes. But trauma, nose picking, which is the most common cause, and second comes hypertension. Where this patient has come to casualty and he is bleeding profusely from the nose. You are the intern or doctor in the casualty and you have to manage the patient. So how will you progress? Sir, I'll pinch the nose, make the uh, extend the neck a bit and pinch the, the neck. Place the neck a bit and uh, pinch the nose for five to six minutes and then I'll check the vitals. Okay, why do you want to check the vitals? What do you want to answer? So, because we check if the patient is hypertensive or uh, if there is more blood work, then we can check if the pulse is ready or if he is going to shock. So, we get an idea whether the patient is hypertensive or not. At the same time, depending on how much blood loss, the vitals will change. I should write an important point that all of you should remember that when you are in emergency, whatever patient comes, the first thing to manage is airway. So you are seeing that the patient is bleeding profusely, but you should see that it should not collapse because of blood going inside and airway getting compromised. So always keep a suction ready, do the suctioning of the throat and then follow the protocols that you have told. Okay. So for anterior nasal packing, we should have a headlight, we should be bright enough to give us the area or the vision. Before packing, always take a tongue depressor, press the tongue. When you press the tongue, you should not be pressing the posterior part, only the anterior one third of the tongue should be pressed and we see behind for any posterior nasal bleed which is happening. Remove it. Once you have seen the posterior part, then we need a ribbon gauze. We take the ribbon gauze, we dip it in a solution of povidone iodine and liquid paraffin. Povidone iodine is antiseptic and liquid paraffin will do the work of lubrication. This is a Tilly's forcep which is used also called as nasal packing forcep which is used to do the nasal packing. And this is the Thodicum anterior rhinoscopy for instrument where we put inside we open the nostril and this helps in visualization of the nose. During the anterior nasal packing, we should take care that we don't hold it in this manner. Because when we hold this in this manner and the tip of the Tilly's forcep, the tip of the Tilly's forcep, if it crosses this ribbon gauze and if I try to insert it, the tip of Tilly's forcep will damage or affect or give the patient pain sensation as we are packing. So, the Tilly's forcep should be, uh, the uh, gauze piece or ribbon gauze should be held only half and the tip should not be coming out of the ribbon gauze. The holding Tilly's forcep or any instrument, we always use the ring finger and the thumb. We don't use the middle finger. It is the ring finger and thumb 
and the middle finger and index finger is to support and guide the instrument. So we put the ring finger, we put the thumb and this is to guide. So this is how you hold it. Now we hold the, the ribbon gauze, we don't hold it from the tip. We will take almost 5 to 6 cm long. We hold it and using cuticum, the packing is always in layer wise. So the first layer goes inside. Certain important point is we don't take it out and insert again. When we have held this ribbon gauze, the instrument should go deep up to the posterior part of the nasal cavity. Then we gently open it and take it out. Then again we hold the second layer and this goes on top of the first layer. We can have an assistant who will hold this first end of the ribbon ball. Just hold this. The second layer will go exactly and come and put it this way. We can see. First layer is inside. The second layer goes exactly over it in the same manner till we reach the posterior part. We gently open the Tilly's forcep and now we close it and press it. The idea is to give a good pressure inside the nose and that pressure will help in hemostasis. Then the third layer again goes over the second layer. It comes out, we press it. The fourth layer goes over it, we press it, fifth layer and this way we do the anterior nasal packing. After this we will cut this two part and in similar fashion we will pack on the other side. After we have done the packing of both the sides we will put a ribbon gauze, we will put a gauze piece and secure it. Again this is not over, we take a tongue depressor. We take a tongue depressor, try to stroke behind. We take a tongue depressor, we press the tongue, we press the tongue and see the posterior pharyngeal wall for any active bleed present. If there is still bleeding present, then we may have to go for posterior nasal packing, which already has been described in previous videos. To demonstrate anterior nasal packing and others will just judge and criticize as to what wrong or what right she has done and then we will understand whether the understanding of anterior nasal packing has happened or not. Okay. So first we will check for posterior bleed using the tongue depressor. Uh, then we will uh, start the anterior nasal packing. So we will use the TV forcep. Um, we will dip, uh, dip the ribbon gauze in the saline and liquid paraffin. We can use cubicum also on the other hand. So we will edit all this. When you hold it, hold it. Keep talking. We will take the cubicum speculum. We will take the thudicum speculum and then we will start the anterior nasal packing. Then we will again take uh, approximately 7 cm of length of the ribbon gauze and put it inside. The other end will be held by the assistant and it, we will press the ribbon gauze inside. We will continue the process till the nasal cavity is back and again for the same, uh, other side will do the same. After nasal packing, what do you do next? Uh, after nasal packing, we'll again check for the posterior bleed using the tongue depressor. We'll look for any active bleeding in the posterior anterior. Okay. So, you will uh, using a tongue depressor, 
we will first check uh, the posterior pharyngeal wall for any bleed. So, is that uh, anterior to the tongue we will address and then we will uh, we'll use the studicum to visualize the nasal cavity and to insert the stereo of the nose. Using uh, TD's posture and uh, the sterile gauze, we will dip it in the, the liquid paraffin and covid an ideal solution. We will use approximately 5 to 6 centimeters of the gauze and some of the, some of the gauze will be outside. Uh, I will tell the assistant to hold the, the outer piece so that it will be easy to take it out. Using 5 to 6 centimeters of length, I will uh, first insert the gauze. Don't take it out, let it go inside. Hold it and put it in, take it inside up to the posterior part. Take it out. Hold it here, hold it. Take, take, take yes. Take yes. Now go inside and learn to the palate and don't come out till you are reached the posterior part. Let it go behind, let it go behind. Now gently open the release and take the release out. Very good. Now take second layer. Same length. Approximately layer by layer I try to insert. After second layer, you take it out. Now close the release and press it. Insert the release inside and press it. Press the second layer on the first layer. Now third layer. <coughs> Okay, so then you, how long will you pack? Uh, approximately one meter. Okay, one meter or the entire nasal cavity gets packed and there is no space inside. And after packing, what do you do? Then I'll move on to the second, second nostril and then pack it with the teeth and then use the tongue depressor and for a posterior Take it out. Then I'll check for a posterior Okay, check. Sure. So this, so, this was the demonstration of anterior nasal pack. This was uh, on this dummy, but however, when you are doing it in a live patient, obviously patient will not be very cooperative in this. Somebody may have to hold the head of the patient and then insertion. You should see that there should not be more trauma by inserting or packing the nose. Okay. I hope all of you are convinced and all of you are now aware of this. And at uh, your UG level, you should be aware of anterior nasal packing because it is one of the important procedures that you should be aware. Okay.